What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, back with another video. And today I'm gonna to tell you why I think men's reviews are kind of useless sometimes. A few weeks ago, I was reached out by Sue Ray to review their new Saturn anamorphic T2.9 50 millimeter lens. And of course, being the YouTube D-bag that I am, gear obsessed piece of trash, I said, yes, I would love to check out, test and review your Sue Ray 50 millimeter T2.9 Saturn lens. And in the midst of that, the rep told me not to post a video on launch day, but to wait a few weeks later for whatever reason. And my assumption would be that I'm a trash YouTuber, not worthy of a launch video. So I just need to wait, let the real YouTubers out there do their thing first, and then I do my thing later. And here I am sitting here today, having no idea how I'm gonna do a review on this lens. And the reason being is, Lens reviews are just kind of weird to me because for the most part, lenses produced after 2015, 2016, they're all very clinically sharp, especially photography-based lenses, your typical Sony GMs, your Canon EF. They all perform very well. And you could find complaints in, let's say, chromatic aberration, corner sharpness, things of that nature. But in real world use, they're all gonna perform even cheaper, third-party lenses from Viltrox, they're all gonna get the job done. Unless you're photographing or filming fast-moving animals, sports, whatever, you probably don't need the like best of the best quick autofocus, let's say from a G Master lens for Sony. However, however, at the same time, when you're talking about the third-party lenses being slower, they're usually barely slower. So in terms of lens reviews, you're really just left to the user experience of like how it feels, what it's made out of. And in the case of the Suray Saturn T2.9 series, the 50 millimeter included, these are all high quality, nicely built lenses as Suray has a reputation for building nice lenses. And it's anamorphic, it gives you that cool look that you're looking for, whether it be the flare, whether it be that bokeh, whether it be the extra wide look of the shot. It's a nice lens. The only downside of it is there's no weather ceiling. So if you're filming R. Kelly in prison peeing on some inmate, your lens is probably gonna get wet and then urine is gonna get all over your FX3, in my case, which is what I'm filming with now, and it's gonna get damaged. So that's the only problem with these super lenses is there's no weather ceiling. But other than that, they're like fantastically built. And I get it, everything needs like a standard, right? lenses you kind of need like a standard of how a uh, lens could be like what is lens perfection and then you could compare it to that go from there with the review just as in anything else in life there are standardized tests and in the case of my son there are standardized like development processes like hey as a toddler your development you should be able to like talk this much or whatever unfortunately in the case of my son he did not reach certain milestones by the time he was two years old. So he was diagnosed as autistic, just as his father. And in my case, I didn't realize I was autistic until I was 38, 39 years old after getting my diagnosis. But there's a thing in order to determine a certain conclusion, you need to compare it to a standard. And in the case of my son and also myself, we don't reach a standard of social communication like regular people do. So then we are considered to have learning disabilities and incorrectly so assumed to have lower intelligence or whatever, but it is what it is. And the same thing goes with lenses. You have an anamorphic lens and when you look at it, it has a bunch of imperfections such as additional chromatic aberration, weird shaped bokeh, distortion. But in the filmmaking world, things like this are desired. A lot of filmmakers desire certain characteristics in lenses, which is usually because it is imperfect. There's certain aspects of the lens that creates a look in the image that is different than that typical clinical look of photography lens. So you go on YouTube and you're looking for a review on the Suray you know, T 2.9 anamorphic lenses, or you're trying to compare it versus whatever other anamorphic lenses are on the market. And in my opinion, it all depends on the person, you know, what you're trying to film, what your goals are, what you do, right? Obviously, if you are a commercial videographer, uh, wedding videographer, corporate 
a videographer, you're going to need certain types of lenses and you probably most likely need some standard lenses in your kit that you own that is you know always available to you and obviously that could autofocus which the Suray which the Suray anamorphic lenses can't because they're all manual focus which is, which is also why I'm connected right now to my Android 8.8 inch tablet to the Hollyland Mars M1 enhanced monitor with wireless capabilities built in so I could have it displayed right here on my tablet so I could see that I'm in focus and the reason why I have to be this close is because I'm an Asian piece of trash 40 years old can't see shit from far away or up close apparently so I got to make sure that uh, I have something right here that I could see and to make sure I'm not completely blurry and making my YouTube channel look more trash than it already is but yeah so until this new Suray Saturn series of anamorphic lenses came out I would say that it is incredibly unnecessary and maybe even a waste of space and money to own anamorphic lenses to actually have some anamorphic lenses yourself unless for some reason you're filming like more than five anamorphic projects a year which I don't know how many people do but like these projects that require anamorphic lenses are probably few and far between for most people and that if you ever needed one you could just go rent one and and you'd be good to go also if you did own one they are massive so even if you're going on a project and you're not sure where you're going to go in terms of creative direction it's kind of unreasonable to carry around like a big ass anamorphic lens not knowing if you are going to use it or not which is why i'm very happy with the size of you know what I'm working with below the belt because I'm Asian and I don't have to carry anything super heavy around all the time not knowing when I'm gonna ever use it you know what I mean so it's with that perspective in mind the fact that the Suray T 2.9 anamorphic 50 millimeter lens 75 and 35 are tiny and they're relatively and they're relatively decently priced I believe they're all under a thousand dollars and look, it's one of those lenses that you can own and that you could actually just keep it in your bag just in case for some reason on a shoot, you're like, hey, you know what? I think I want to do some anamorphic stuff. And then you have these small, nicely compact light lenses in your backpack. It doesn't take up too much space and you could have it with you. I did the same thing. I went to go film a wedding and I said, look, you know, I'm going to just bring this 50 just in case I want to like do some anamorphic stuff. I got some random anamorphic shots of the dance floor, got some nice lens flares. And in the case of lens flares on this Suray lens, I got the neutral non uh, colored um, lens flare. So it just takes on these lens flares, just takes on the color of the light source. And they look nice for the most part, other than the times when I get dual flaring sometimes, which I don't like. But, you know, because it's too much. But the one nice streak of flare is sometimes pretty cool. And, you know, it works out. You know, like, it doesn't take up too much space. So if you just want to have an anamorphic lens in your collection to use with your mirrorless camera, these Suray lenses are a really nice thing to just have sitting around when you want to use them because of their size, they're practical, and the image is really good. You can see... This, these shots, the lenses are sharp and, you know, some even complain it's too sharp, but of course you could put filters on whatever you got to do to like lessen the sharpening. I don't have any filters on it right now. I'm just shooting it straight up. Currently using my Sony FX3 with Falcam cage, Falcam top handle. I got, again, I got the Hollyland Mars M1 enhanced monitor to help me see what the heck I'm looking at. And the, and both the camera and the monitor is powered by Kame TV's new V-mount battery the 99C, which is an amazing V-mount battery that has 65 watt USB-C output, um, all built in. It's a fantastic little battery, in my opinion, especially for like a small, compact, handheld rig like I'm working with right now. To be honest, it's actually very incredible how Suray was able to engineer an anamorphic lens to this size. I mean, this lens is tiny compared to like any other anamorphic lens out there. Um, and, you know, to me, Again, the only downsides is there's no weather sealing and probably the fact that it's T2.9. I wish it was maybe a T2, 
T1.9 or something like that. But of course, you know, when you get to those levels of aperture, you're going to be talking about even a bigger lens. So there's some compromises there. But if you're looking for an anamorphic lens, you get the anamorphic characteristics. You're trying to shoot some type of short film. You're trying to shoot some type of documentary where you want the anamorphic look. I would look no further than the Suray Saturn series of lenses. And in my opinion, the 50 millimeter is probably the go-to one to get if you had to get just one, simply because you do get that standard 50 millimeter look top and bottom, but you get the width of a 35 millimeter lens, basically. Um, that's just the way I look at it. So basically, top and down, the look is of a 50 millimeter standard photography lens, but then you get that added width, which gives you the additional footage of what a 35 millimeter lens would offer you. And a lot of times when I'm filming, if I'm not using a zoom lens and I'm using primes, I'm always going back and forth between a 35 and a 50 because 35 gives me a little wider aspect, gives me a little bit more of that environment, but the 50 gives me that true, um, I guess, portrait look that I usually look for when I'm trying to tell a story. You can't always judge and review lenses by looking at charts because charts aren't made for every type of lens in every type of situation. Charts don't consider um, what the artist is going for. Just as standardized tests doesn't always test for a certain person's specific level of intelligence. Like you can't, you know, go to an artist or a musician and try to like test them on science and math and measure their intelligence that way. They're not gonna excel at science and math like that math science genius over there. But that math science genius probably can't play music like this musician, probably can't paint like this artist, probably can't go behind the camera and film certain types of shots the same way this artist can. You know, everyone has different levels of intelligence. Everyone has different ways of thinking and developing. And like the Suray anamorphic lens, you have to appreciate it for its perspective. And just like my son, and you gotta pre appreciate the way we perceive things and our perspective on things. The most well-dressed dude at a job interview is not always the best one for the job. You know, we're always trying to measure people, objects, gear, whatever, to these standards, but we have to consider things on the outside, consider other variables and other reasonings on why a lens is the way it is or why a person is the way they are or what have you. At the end of the day, do I recommend the Suray T2.9 anamorphic lens? Of course I do. And of course, but that also depends on you and what you're looking to do. Like if you're gonna be going out, hey, I'm a wedding photographer, or should I get a Suray T2.9 anamorphic? No, of course not. You're not gonna go shoot a wedding with a manual focused anamorphic lens. It makes no sense. You get a standard lens with the best flare resistance, the best corner sharpness or whatever to get your shots and autofocus and all that stuff. But hey, if you're trying to shoot a documentary video, you're trying to shoot some short film, you're trying to shoot some special project and you want a specific look out of this project to tell that story, then yes, you know, you should get an anamorphic lens and there's nothing better in terms of like for the money and size, weight, whole nine yards than the Suray Saturn series of uh, anamorphic lenses. So anyways, I hope this video is insightful. I hope it helped you make a purchase decision and you know, maybe hopefully you don't, you know, just rely on charts and next time you're thinking about buying a lens and then, and as always, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and till next time, lighten up. Hey man, what you doing? I'm just setting up a key light for a video. Oh my god, you're lighting a trap? Bro, I'm just trying to bounce this light off a white wall, get a nice soft light source, looking like it's coming from the outside window, and then I got a nice warm practical light for my backlight. If you want to be the bat, if you want to be professional, if you want to be award winning, you need to have the RGB, LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, G lighting. Bro, I have no idea what you're talking about. Let me show you. Oh my god. Bro, people do whatever it is they want with their life. It is none of my business, but this is ridiculous. 
It looks like I am sponsored by Squarespace, Storeblocks, and I got Sony sending me useless vlog cameras every month for review. Sign up for my How to Be Not Racist Matter Clad only $29.99.